everybody, what's going on? This is Bruce at the Bowski Studio, heading off for a little solo camping trip and hoping to get some painting done. So, uh, thanks for joining me. Alright, so I'm going to Bradbury State Park in Maine. And uh, not my first choice. Lily Bay was packed up full, and uh, here we are. So, uh, going to Bradbury, I'll see you there. We're getting a rain test right now, big time. We'll see how it goes. Wow. Okay, so uh, I'm at Bradbury Mountain State Park, and uh, got all set up, as you can see behind me. We'll take a little tour. But uh, expecting to do some painting this afternoon and got a downpour. Had a couple minor leaks that I need to deal with next time around for sealing up the canopy. But overall it worked pretty well because it was a super downpour. Now let's take a tour. So here's what I got going on. I have a 10x10 cheapo canopy from uh, Wally World. Go get you some side panels. Some hook on easily. Uh, this one does okay. It's uh, Ozark Trail. Goes with the connect tent. Oh, sorry, not this one, but uh, this one over here. The lighting's very poor. It's only quarter of five, which is not that great in terms of lighting. But uh, here's what we got going on. A little kitchen stand, which I'll use for painting also if I need to stay under here my tent cot covered up with its rain fly another little which i should have set up ahead of time but that would have been helpful about an hour ago when we had downpours to keep the water away from the rug this outdoor rug it was sopping wet here down below it still is wet but it's surprisingly not as soppy wet as i would expect it's like it, uh, it's going to be quick, quick dry or quick drain, whatever you want to call it. Well, I'm going to go for a walk around the campground and uh, got a big spot. It's my fire pit and everything. So let's take a, let's take a little stroll. Now, I've been to this park several times uh, this summer. Mostly, I mean, it's a nice park, but all the other parks in Maine are really hogged up with uh, traffic. And you just can't get in so this place always seems to have openings and a lot of vacancies right now I expect more rain I might take a walk over to the state park and see what's going on there I think I just might go to a park and do some walking around and rain for no good reason okay so I decided to what the heck just uh, if it's gonna rain I'm gonna enjoy the rain and I got my little frog togs uh, poncho thing and uh, I think I might take a walk up the summit. It's 0.2 miles. It is uphill a little bit. And here's what I'm wearing. You think I learned by now, but I only have my other boots. And while they're waterproof, if I get a downpour, I don't need my boots wet. So we'll see what happens. going uphill the whole time this should be fun Whew. it's been a long time since I had to exert myself like this Whew. of course I'm moving at a good clip Whew. all right I'll catch up to you okay yeah it's a little bit of a uphill climb here but I could be taking my time more, but I want to get up there and see what's going on. I've been up here before. It's nothing super exciting, but we'll see what it looks like in rain. Okay, I'll meet you up there. Almost there. Just a few more steps. And here we are. Quarter to 
or seven in the evening we had some thunderstorms for quite a while a couple hours we had some rain clouds and now the clouds are clearing off it's gonna be gorgeous tomorrow so there's gonna be no painting today uh, it's getting too late uh, beautiful skies out right now you can probably see the Sun behind me sorry about that we'll put it to the side here but uh, I'm just gonna go take a little drive check out the sights and uh, show you around Where I'm going to head is uh, in Freeport. There's a road that goes out to Wolf's Neck State Park. Uh, last time I came camping at this campground, a friend and I uh, went there, but I didn't have time to paint. So I'm going to go scope out uh, the views. There's some views outside the park uh, showing the ocean and that sort of thing. And I'm hoping if I get there early in the morning, uh, crack of dawn almost, that kind of thing, that I'll have some time all day tomorrow to paint. So uh, let's keep fingers crossed and I'll fill you in once I get there. Beautiful time of day right now. So one thing that's going to be good is if I do see some good sights, I'll have something to paint tomorrow evening uh, to finish up the day. So that's the plan. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Look at that. That's a view right there. This one I'm talking about. Just a simple seascape kind. Well, it's not ocean and crashing surf and all that. But this is what Maine is like. I love it. Get these pastures right next to the ocean like this. Very nice, because over here. Look at that. I don't know if you can see, but we got some cow action going on. Very cool. And there's the cute little cows. Just hanging out. And I just saw this little sign. Which won't be good. It's probably because it's near the cows. I don't know. Please, no parking. So hopefully, if I'm up that way, it won't be a big deal tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, it's almost uh, 6.30 in the morning on the next day. It's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, i got some nice cloud action going on. I'm headed back over to the Wolf's Neck State Park area to see about maybe doing some painting. And that uh, should be pretty nice. The sun's coming up, and we'll see how it looks when I get there. So, let's continue on. Okay, so I'm at this little... Uh, area next to Wolf's Nut State Park. Um, it's a little campground area. I'm not in the campground. Still got a little bit to go. I uh, can't get in there unless you're uh, camping there, but uh, some cool spots along the way. Here's one of them behind me. It's a nice uh, marshy area because of course they're on the ocean. And uh, check this out. That's pretty nice right there. And this seems like a good time and place to paint. Very cool. Okay, so I checked out a few more uh, areas around there. It's not too much further in. You get to the campsite that you can't go into. And uh, for right now, the light isn't quite bright. And the views, I thought, were pretty nice looking. Maybe a different time of day. I'm going to go check out a road called Flying Point Road. And from what it looks like on the map, it goes uh, by some open water. So we're going to check that out. I've never been down it. I've always just come to the... Uh, Wolf's Neck State Park, which I the road I'm on now, and the park doesn't open till nine. I'm sure the gate's probably open. You just put money in the thing, uh, but I suspect the lighting's still going to be about the same as where I just was because it's right adjacent to the park. So uh, let's go a little exploring. So I'm actually over here in uh, near Yarmouth, North Yarmouth, and doing this little boardwalk trail. I came in over there, and trail comes around and supposedly follows around, and there's a river that we're going to check out. My grand plan is to make it over to Wolf's Neck State Park 
it is now uh oh wow it's only 840 they don't open till nine so uh pretty sure went by there earlier and they were locked up so figured i'd do this do a little exploring near the campsite so i don't know probably five eight miles down the road from bradbury so let's see what we can get into okay well there's quite a bit of trail here in the woods and uh, i really want to make it to the uh wolf's neck park but there's one other tiny park that i want to check out on the way there so we're going to wrap this up and get back to the car okay we're at wolf's neck state park super sunny out very nice very nice indeed and i am packed to the gills because i want to do some painting for a while it's the plan let me show you that. So here's what I got going on. Got my, my gorilla boxes uh, with me. And uh, we're gonna try to find a spot that I painted before because there's a couple different views looking out. And we'll see what happens. I got binoculars and everything. Check out the osprey nests. And uh, we'll go from there. It's actually pretty comfy carrying all this, believe it or not. And uh, of course I got my camera couple extra camera stuff to film so a little bit of extra weight I'm going to try to paint today and we'll see what happens okay there's the view I'm going to paint on uh, 8, uh, 8 by 10 going to be using this panel right here and I put my insert board in there so it stays in place and uh, got some cobalt teal titanium white ultramarine blue cad red light High roll red, I believe it's called. Cad yellow light, cad yellow medium, and uh, we'll see what we get into. Okay, I'm going to be using uh, liquid for my medium, and uh, just a small selection of brushes. We'll get to those in a moment. I don't think I'm going to tone it today. I'm going to just uh, go for it. It's going to be very windy today, so I'm not sure how the audio is going to be picking up. And uh, let's hope for the best. It's one thing I love about using the Gorilla Painter box. Very sturdy with the tripod. Super, super sturdy. I don't think I could have picked a better day for this painting adventure. It was super nice out. Yes, very, very windy, but... Hey, I'll take it, you know? I mean, it was just uh, being along the coast and kind of having my own time while camping was uh, really enjoyable. Uh, sorry. I was sorry that, you know, we had the rain in the beginning because I was really hoping to do at least two paintings on this trip. And uh, it just didn't happen, but that's okay. Uh, you can't control everything. You just got to go with the flow. Try to. And uh, again, like I mentioned, I'm working on a white panel. And honestly, I don't know if I'll ever do that again. I just, I'm not a big fan. Normally I like to tone it a pale gray because of my painting look that I want to my paintings. More naturalistic, the gray, the pale gray is a nice uh, feature. And, or the uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna kind of base. Uh, so that's okay. We have to try things, as I've said before in many videos. You can't just uh, use the same old same old thing um, I do think there's a natural inclination to settle on a mode of operation that if you use that 70 percent of time because you know we got enough to worry about just trying to capture the scene we don't need to recreate the wheel every time we paint now you saw me there previously kind of recorrecting my drawing and that that can happen a lot like I don't get into uh, thumbnails too much I don't really know why, it's just I've never been a big fan. I know they're useful, 
but I'd rather just jump into it lightly with the sketch uh, thinned out paint with turpentine and if it doesn't pan out when I have just some base lines finding the major shapes I'll know for me personally if it's gonna work or not uh, the big challenge here in this piece was the you can see kind of in the background the tidal waters or the tides coming in or out I didn't really pay attention to the sequence there but the point is the water blended in with the sand and, and the subtle variations there and two if you don't work in this environment a lot which I don't a more interior main uh, you tend to uh, find a happy average to come by and you'll see that later on but uh, I knew that was going to be a challenge uh, ahead of time so nothing super shocker but uh, just trying to get some base shapes in of the mound of the of the uh, little island there and that's where the osprey live they have little nests up in tree and they, I'm sure there's obviously other nests along the way but uh, a very common spot where you see them flying around which is very cool they're very squeaky I don't know if you ever heard them chirp or whatever you call it for birds but they're very uh, very squeaky and it's very interesting because they're kind of a sort of big bird so it's kind of kind of odd I just want to take a second if you're new to the channel watching for the first time and enjoying the video so far I invite you to subscribe if you do so hit that bell notification icon because it will alert you as to when I post new videos uh, and I encourage everybody if you like it to give it a thumbs up apparently it does help the YouTube algorithm to uh, show this to more people I would highly appreciate that thank you very much I'm just using a dark purple tone right at this moment to get the big shapes so important you'll see that I'm not using an umbrella I very rarely use one I have a couple styles and the reality is especially today the wind just too crazy even with my uh, tripod kit just you know just one more thing to worry about and yes if you were in super hot Sun it would not be good but uh, that's just the way I, I tend to work 90% of the time and uh, something to consider for yourselves um, it can wash out your painting and, and have different light sources on different things but you just try to learn to adapt now I'm still just using a purple tone made up with ultramarine blue I think a little cad red or the pyrrole red just create some dark value and just trying to get the shapes in and what helps when I'm using the terp especially in these windy conditions it'll tack up pretty good pretty fast and when I overlay colors you won't have much intermixing because the paint I'm, I'm not making it thick layers uh, just keeping it thin and and workable trying to find the shape of the island uh, you could spend hours really showing every little detail but I'm getting a general shape of it and just trying to go for it and especially for the fact that I actually haven't been out planar painting and a pretty good long time um, just trying to it's like riding a bicycle you don't really forget but you know you're just trying to get your feet wet again and that sort of thing oh just a little FYI I'm sitting on some rocks as I paint this and uh, well depending on what kind of rock you get can be kind of flat I actually had gone to L.O. Bean and uh, saw when I was buying some other camping gear a little seat pad inflatable seat pad sort of like the camping pads so I now have that in the kit and yes you can little, use a little piece of rolled up foam pad or something of that nature but the more compact you, you can roll something up and tuck it away in your pack the better and uh, yes uh, if you're not careful I mean it's a pretty rugged material but you gotta watch for little pokes and all that but I found it pretty pretty comfortable and uh, first time using it on this trip so that was uh, pretty cool so pretty happy with that if you'd like to hear uh, or want any questions answered about the gear that I use when I plan or paint let me know and if there's enough interest I'll do a new updated sort of video there's really not too much has changed from previous kits I'm always shaking up the backpacks a bit but other than that I uh, use pretty much the same thing and uh, let me know so what I'm using now is one of my synthetic flats to chisel out around that island see how I'm doing that that is a nice technique to 
finalize your shapes a bit and then I just wiggle the brush around a bit here and there. You can use a softer haired brush if you want some really fuzzed out sort of foggy aspect to the background. But now I'm just kind of blocking in some base tones. The sky was moving frequently. You got to pick and choose your battles. What's going to be interesting about this area in here is I'm going to have to, I mean it's so similar with the water. I'm going to have to pump up the color a little bit. I think that'll help. Let's see. Let's try some red. Cat yellow medium. Red. Using a little bit of the blue from the water to neutralize. Lots of white, I think. We'll see what happens. That is the one thing I love about planar painting is every scene is going to present different challenges. You have the environmental challenges of wind and, and irritations, uh, distractions like that. And then the physical, uh, the subject you're painting, making on the fly choices of how best to represent certain elements. So there is always that challenge. And that's one reason why I love the planar painting. And I'm not looking to necessarily have this super finished painting. Some work out better than others. Now this technique that I'm using right now is really handy for chiseling out little uh, shapes of tree foliage and that sort of thing. I could have probably used it a little smaller flat, but I was trying to go as big as I could for as long as I could. And uh, it wasn't super successful the whole way, but it gave me uh, some starting points to finesse it in studio if I wanted to. And trying to get some activity in the sky, even though it's just kind of a flat tone. Just trying to shake it up a bit, and especially when I get to the clouds later, trying to show movement with the wind. And uh, that's an important factor. For me, it was really important not to over blend the sky. Mix up new tones, mix them in there, and have them be adjacent to the previous tones, values, and to give the illusion of mixing and if you got the color just right, it works out pretty good. And just trying to get some, uh, sometimes you got to have enough paint on the surface too to work with to blend. So that's also something to consider so that when you start to uh, blend a tad, like I'm going to be starting in a moment here to give the illusion of wind, uh, that will facilitate the ability to do that. And uh, you don't want to overdo it though. Keep it fairly simple. You can always uh, blend it more later. Okay, so it's uh, coming along. Eh, it's getting there. It's only been about 40 minutes. Trying to get the big shapes in. The wind's been pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, not really threatening to blow anything over, but uh, just sort of a thing to be aware of and weight things down accordingly. Uh, what I'm going to work on next is getting the island uh, detail in, start shaping that, and the challenge is going to be because the island has low tide right now, you have the tide mark on the rocks along with shadows. So that could be confusing, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, let's get to it. Okay, here we go. Gonna lay in the, uh, try to get some color mixed up. It's a very loose painting for sure, I mean it's Pretty, pretty darn loose, and I'm just trying to keep it as loose as possible. So then, when I tighten it up, I don't, you know, I want it, I want to keep that uh, freshness. First, let me reiterate some of the dark green areas, mixing up some cad yellow medium, ultramarine blue, a little cad red. And I uh, should have put, I just really love burnt umber for the, my look that I like in my paintings. But, I'm just trying this. So, just trying to facilitate some dark areas that I see. And of course we'll have some sky holes in a moment. That really adds to uh, showing some reality of the scene. 
trying to add some variety within the dark shape. Wow, this is going to be complicated. Challenge City. Looking kind of sketchy right now. Boy, this is tough. Got a strong shadow going on. Because of the angle, again, of the light. And like I mentioned before, it is challenging because of the tide line. You got to somehow show that. Ah, oh, this is turning into a train wreck a little bit, but I'll per persevere here. Then you have the color of the rock, which is just kind of like seaweed and kelp. It's a very dull, orangey tone. I'll try my best to define it here. So many similar values, I don't know. Sometimes it looks better when you get it home, for sure. Well, this is what we got going on. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty messy still. i got to put sky holes in. And I don't like how this seems level with the horizon. And I uh, should pay attention to that in the beginning. I'll probably adjust that somehow. But uh, sort of starting to get some tide thing simulated. Still tricky. We'll see how it goes. Whew. This is proving to be fun times right now. So now you know, not everything's perfect painting. Uh, this uh, was really turning into a hot mess. The biggest thing was really knowing that I didn't have the time to, but the reality is that I needed time to study the difference in tones between the uh, tide line on that island that is a whole different tone uh, because it's uh, always exposed to the tides. And then the top part of the rock, which is always kind of above that tide line and then top that off with shadows so it'd be something that in the end if you had the time like if I was doing a week-long painting trip you you could spend time kind of doing little six by eight studies of certain parts so when you do a bigger painting you can understand the whole like if you're doing this island pick out little details do little six by eight studies that kind of thing but uh, just didn't have time also was a challenge when you're painting those for the foreground section the reality is you may have elements there and you think oh, wow those are cool rocks and this and that by the time you paint them in there you realize oh they kind of mimic each other or maybe they don't but they all line up or you know you as an artist have to pick and choose a representation of that uh, environment uh, in this case the rocks yes that helped you know identify the scene but I can use them to lead the eye in, have a dark accent here, light accent there, that sort of thing, and still tie in using elements in my environment to look at to uh, facilitate having the painting make sense. Rather than following it religiously, we don't want to typically do that. There's always some kind of adjustments we make, charging up color or whatever it may be, like I did with the sandy color, because you look in real life, it's just a lot of gray. A lot of great. For me, uh, looking back on this uh, painting as I'm uh, making the video, point is, go outside your comfort zone. It's it's really easy to do the same old thing. Super easy. It's a human nature thing. I don't know. But on the flip side, you'll know when your painting's honest. That's I feel. And it's important for us to try to be authentic and find subjects that inspire us. And I'm going to wrap it up here. Finish this at, uh, take a look at it at camp. Okay, well, I'm going to end this uh, little session here and probably touch it up back at camp, take a look at it. Uh, pretty hot mess going on. I don't know. Just lost control of it. I think there's some good spots I do like about it, some good areas. We'll talk about those later on. And uh, 
just want to get back to camp and have a little have a little lunch and then hopefully get out for some more painting but uh, yeah we'll catch up later and uh, talk about it okay just got back up the trail and back to the car yeah I'm not too happy with the painting well like I said we'll take a look see if it's salvageable uh, when we get back to camp and uh, take a look I was hoping to find some more barn type idea out here in Freeport along the coast you get a lot of old barns the problem is when you find something sorry got a lot of gear going on Whew. when you find something there's no parking you can't just pull off the side of the road and be out of the way so that's part of the problem but you got some nice trails right along the water pretty cool but I'm getting hungry I think I'm gonna go back to camp and have some lunch okay here's what I ended up with today and uh, it's not the greatest and it's not the worst I guess I purposely was gonna blow off up top there the uh, trees to give a sense of continuance I'm not sure but yeah you know you win some you lose some it's right now about uh, quarter of five in the evening and I think I might go over to Bradbury and check that out okay so I'm gonna go over to uh, Bradbury and check that out uh, for the evening and just chill out and relax because the lights not so great here in the campground because so many trees but uh, I don't know we'll see how it goes uh, for touching up this piece I don't personally I don't see saving it I don't know I do like the clouds I like how I handled the sky a little bit there's some aspects uh, that I'll, I'll try to go over but couple things with the horizon and the element with the uh, rocks uh, you know the base of the island there with the trees kind of in line with the horizon which is not good and uh, maybe I'll just while the paints wet tomorrow morning just make the horizon just a quarter inch just a quarter inch would have made all the difference and it's funny how we don't think about that when we're painting but to be honest, you're out there, it was super windy. You're just trying to get something down. You, you, plain air paintings about making decisions on the fly on a, in a perfect day, which is rare, you'll have hours to fiddle with something. But uh, you just gotta make stuff happen, hopefully. And it's a good, useful skill overall. So, uh, yeah, give and take. Studio's different than plain air for sure.